Hi, my name is Nina Layden, and I am a children's book author and illustrator. And I am going to read my book, Private Iguana, The Case of the Missing Chameleon. And this book came out in 1995, and it was published by Chronicle Books. I'm sorry to say that it's no longer in print, but I don't know, maybe someday. I really hope it'll be back in print again. And I wrote and illustrated this. Uh, I did the illustrations with pastel, which is the colored chalk you blend with your fingers. And this is a mystery story. And I just wanted to let you know why I did this book. When I was growing up, my mom used to make me watch old detective movies. And I found that I really loved them. I liked a character whose name was Sam Spade. And I based Private Iguana on those kind of detective movies. And Private Iguana was based on that detective, Sam Spade. Um, after I read the story, I'm going to show you a few things. I have the original sketches from when I submitted the book, and then I want to do an activity where we draw. And so if you have paper and some markers standing by, that would be great. But first, I'm going to read you my story, Private Iguana, The Case of the Missing Chameleon. It uh, goes like this, and it starts of, well, this is the title page, and there's, um, of course, a magnifying glass. And, Okay. This is Private Iguana, The Case of the Missing Chameleon, by me, Nina Layton. I was sitting at my desk when I got the call. Private Iguana here, I said. Yes, I can find missing lizards. A chameleon? Well, okay. Why don't you come over to my office and bring a photo? As I hung up, I wondered if I should have said, okay. Chameleons are hard to find, but she sounded upset. I guess I'm a sucker for a lizard in distress. You can call me Liz, she said, as she made herself comfortable in my office. Here's a recent snapshot of Leon. He didn't come home for dinner one night last week. I had made his favorite, cricket stew. He was acting a little strange, changing colors every minute. He's always been the stay-at-home type, and, well, frankly, boring. I'm afraid he could be in trouble. I puffed myself up and said, no, don't you worry, Liz. If I can't find Leon, no one can. By the way, I asked, what color was he when you last saw him? Quickly, I made a pile of posters of Leon, the missing chameleon. Not knowing what color he was, I figured I'd color each poster differently. Too bad Leon didn't have a scar or a tattoo. Then I set out to hang them up anywhere I could. I stopped first to check in with Officer Croker, the bullfrog chief of police. Officer Croker, who had a habit of jumping to conclusions, said, a missing chameleon? That's a waste of time. Probably pretending to be a rock. I said, thanks for your help, officer. Maybe I'll go talk to some boulders. So I hit the dirt to see what I could dig up. I plastered the forest with posters. I went over fields, under rocks, and up trees. I talked to turtles, lizards, snakes, frogs, toads, and a couple of skinks. It was getting late. My feet were tired. My tongue was tied and I had no clues, no tails, no trails, no Leon. Maybe this chameleon had really disappeared for good, but maybe I just wasn't looking in the right place. I decided to head home and start again in the morning. I, uh, on my way, I saw a firefly-like glow in the distance by the swamp. I had forgotten all about the lizard lounge. The lizard lounge was kind of a slimy place where only the most cold-blooded reptiles hung out. My head was telling me not to go there, but my stomach said, boy, I sure could go for some of those greasy fried grasshoppers and a tall cold drink. So I put my stomach in charge and followed it. The lizard lounge was buzzing with activity. I scoped out the place, making sure to not ruffle any feathers or step on any tails. I made my way to the back and sat at a table where I could keep an eye on things. The menu was my first order of business. I noticed the special this week was cricket stew. It's probably just a coincidence, I thought to myself. A sweet salamander sashayed over to my table. I'm Sally, your waitress, she said. What's a nice amphibian like you doing in a place like this, I asked her. And when I didn't get an answer, I ordered my food. I noticed a sign on the stage that said, this week, Camille and the Gila Girls. I said, hey, Sally, who's this Camille? Sally smiled. I don't know who Camille is. She just appeared out of the blue a few days ago, but boy, can she sing. She fits right in with our house band, the Gila Girls. You really should stay for the show. 
I had nothing better to do, and the fried grasshoppers were pretty tasty, so I decided to stay. Soon the place got dark. Everyone stopped what they were doing. All eyes were on the stage. The Gila girls took their places, then a spotlight came on, the curtain rustled, and out slithered the most unusual chameleon I had ever seen. Something about her was familiar. It was like I'd seen her face somewhere before. I, I tried to remember, but then she started to sing, and my mind went blank. I was hypnotized. When the show was over, I clapped and whistled as loud as I could. There was no doubt I had just seen a star. I had to get an autograph. Maybe I was, um, maybe I, it was instinct. Maybe I was crazy, but here I was, sneaking around backstage at the Lizard Lounge, looking for her dressing room door. I was so nervous. I was shaking. I knocked on her door, and when a voice said, yes, come in, I nearly shed my skin. I couldn't believe I was alone with an amazing singer. I stammered, C Camille, I, I wanted to get your autograph. C could you sign this? And I pulled out the first thing I could find from my pocket and handed it to her. Camille looked surprised. She said, how did you know? What did I know, I wondered. I was totally confused. And then I put two and two together. I knew there was something familiar about Camille, and by mistake, I had handed her the photo of Leon to sign. And then I realized that Camille was Leon, the missing chameleon. I had hit the jackpot. You know, Liz is looking for you, I said. She's very upset. She misses you. Leon took off his wig and sighed. I miss her, too. But I was worried that Liz thought I was too boring. I thought she might lead me for someone more exciting. I wanted to show her that I had talent, that I could be somebody special, maybe even a star. When I heard that the Gila girls needed a new singer, I jumped at the chance to polish my act. Naturally, I blended right in. And so I closed the case of the missing Camille Leon. Leon, um, uh, last I heard, Leon was the singing sens sensation of the swamp. Liz watches the show and then returns to the kitchen where she's the new head chef. Her cricket stew is getting rave reviews. It seems that the Lizard Lounge is actually becoming a respectable place. As for me, who knows what the next case will bring? A frog that jumped bail. A turtle running a shell game. A poison snake. Just remember, if you have a problem, give me a call. The name is Private Iguana. The I stands for I'll be waiting. That's my book, Private Iguana, The Case of the Missing Chameleon. And um, I just would like to show how I submitted this book and sent it to the publisher. This is the actual original dummy that I made, and it is called a dummy, and I know that's a silly name, but it is a smart way of showing a publisher what you think your book could look like. And um, you don't have to use a plastic folder, but I thought that looked pretty good. And I drew uh, just on paper, Xerox paper, this is called the end papers. This is not what wound up in the book. I drew a bunch of chameleons, but that's how I drew it. And that's the title page. And then I drew it with a pencil, and I wrote the words with a pen. And you can kind of see this looks pretty much like the final art, except that was done in color. Um, a lot of it looks exactly the same. And I sent this entire sketched dummy to the publisher, and when they finally said yes, they wanted to publish it. And um, we went through some revisions, which is what you normally do. And then this book went on to press, was printed, and I was really excited about it. I had planned on doing a series of detective mystery stories with Private Iguana, but when my publisher put it out of print, I kind of stopped. But maybe someday I'll pick it up again. But what I want to do with you is a little fun activity because I happen to love detectives. And I wanted to show you that anything and anybody can be a detective, and it's really fun to do that. So I started off by drawing just some random characters here um, really quick. I drew a squirrel, um, I drew a cat, and I drew an octopus. And then I had some fun. Um, I drew a little detective's hat on a piece of paper, and then I copied it. And so I made a bunch of them, and I cut them out. And what I'm going to show you right now is that anybody can be a detective, and it will look really great. So I've got a glue stick here, and if I can get the top off of it, 
I'm going to put some glue on the back of these detective hats real quick and I am going to show you just how much fun it is to turn anybody into a detective. So here we go. I'm going to make this little squirrel guy into a detective right there. See how that, he really does. He looks like a detective. Of course I gave him the detective coat. And I am going to give this cat a detective hat. And there you go. Doesn't he look good? There's the cat or she. And I am going to give the octopus. I thought that would be fun to do an octopus detective. And you could think about what sort of mystery stories that you could write that all of your characters could solve. You know, um, every different type of detective could solve different mysteries. So there we go. So now we have a squirrel detective and a cat detective and an octopus detective just by giving them some hats. And um, by the way, I love hats. I have lots of different hats. This is kind of my detective hat. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you, if you got a piece of paper and a marker, is how I draw the detective hat. And then we're going to put private iguana under it. So I am going to show you how easy it is. It's really easy to draw a detective hat. But I have to kind of lean over, so if it looks kind of funny, it's just because I'm drawing sideways. I'm going to start at the top of the hat. And it's not hard to draw. All I'm going to do, it looks like I'm drawing a big upside-down U-shape. Right? Kind of like a, you know, you flipped a bowl over, or a letter C kind of that fell over. And easy, I am going to just draw a like curve, like a rainbow curve line on the bottom. Then I'm going to draw another little rainbow curve. This is going to be the ribbon that goes around the hat. Simple, right? And then this part on the bottom kind of looks like we're drawing a big pancake around the hat. Right? Hat, easy. And then to make it look a little bit fancier, I'm going to put, like, it looks like a, a comma right there, or the letter C. I can put another little one right there. And if I want the ribbon to look shiny, I'm going to just kind of color it part way on one side. I'm going to color it part way on the other side and look shiny. Look, we got a hat. We got to put somebody in it. So I am going to show you how I draw private iguana from the side because that's kind of easier. We're going to start with his nose. And he's an iguana, so he's got like a big nose. And it looks just like we're going to draw a really big letter C. And then I'm going to draw his eye kind of under the hat here by just drawing kind of an um, almond shape like an oval or an almond. And then I'm going to put the pupil in there, which kind of looks like, um, like a cat almost a little. I'm going to color it a little bit. And then here, he's got some shadow under his eye. Looks like another big giant like bowl shape. And it's going to be a little bit there. Now he's an iguana. His nose is just kind of a little dot. But I'm going to put a little kind of comma next to it. And his mouth's really easy. I'm just going to draw a line. We're going to make him smirking, so I'm going to put a little comma on that side. And now the back of his head. I'm going to draw a line that goes down a little. And iguanas have spikes, and this is easy. I'm just going to draw some big spikes coming off. I'm just going to give him, like, three of them. And then um, under his neck, he has a really funny thing. And it looks like um, on a rooster, that's called a waddle. But on an iguana, it's called a dewlap. And it, I'm just going to draw a squiggly line hanging down. And then there's some tiny little spikes on his chin that look like little V's. And then what I'm going to do is give him, well, it is his ear. And it's called a pearl scale. And it's a big circle here. And then there's another little one that's kind of partial next to it. And if you, know, if you want, you could draw some texture. It's always good because, you know, there's scales on iguanas. So it looks like he's got freckles but I'm giving him some textures. And then he's wearing a detective jacket. So I am going to draw one side of it here. This is the um, lapel. And it's just like the letter W or two mountains on their side. Here, I'll just draw this down like this. And then I'll just make it coming up, like sticking up on this side, two mountains over there. Make a little line coming down like that. And make it go down here, and I'm going to give him some shoulders. And the, here's where his arms are. And there. Private Iguana. 
I hope that you will be inspired to draw lots of characters, make them detectives, and tell your own mystery stories. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching.